Las Vegas. Hey, Joe, how are you doing? What up, Joe? There's theme music. Let's go. Molly, Stephen A., pleasure to be with you as always. Thanks for having me on the show. Let's try My to make pleasure. some money here. Let's do it. Let's, Let's do, it. do it. All right, New England, three and a half point underdogs. What's the play, Joe? I like New England tonight. Buffalo may be the better team, but that doesn't mean they're going to have the better game. The Bills have been struggling on defense over the last month of the season. Last four games, they're giving up 25 points per game, which isn't all that great, especially when you consider that came against Zach Wilson, Jacoby Brissett, and Jared Goff. Not exactly the who's who of NFL quarterbacks. Josh Allen, I don't think he's 100% with the elbow, and now you're going on the road to play one of the best defenses in the NFL in New England, who's going to take the air out of the ball tonight. They're going to Slow the game down. They're going to run the ball. They're going to keep Allen on the sideline. And based on how sloppy they were in Minnesota, I bet they had a clean week of practice with an emphasis on no stupid plays, no stupid penalties. I like the Patriots plus the points. Wow, I like the, the I like upset. the I like the Bills minus the points. I just think that the Patriots are going to have a strong <laughs> inability to score the football. If, I, I, I get where he's coming from. I get where yeah. you come from, Joe, about that defense. But I just think that Buffalo is going to be too potent enough offensively. And if Josh Allen hadn't played against the Detroit, I would be more worried about his elbow. But if you could put him on the field against in Detroit with that elbow, then 10 days later you could do this. How does it feel to be in Vegas? It's nice. <laughs> right? It's nice. You it's enjoyed nice. yourself? It's nice. Miami's a four-point road underdog at San Francisco. Who do you like in this one, Joe? I'm leaning to Miami, and I know there are a lot of people from my former radio station in San Francisco who are going to disagree and hate this commentary, but here's the thing with the Niners. Everybody loves their defense. Everybody's talking about how it's the best in the NFL. They haven't really played anybody. They've played two offenses this season that rank in the top 12 in scoring. Two. Kansas City, who blew the doors off them on their own field, and Seattle, who they beat. Miami's somewhere in between those two. Better than Seattle, not as good as Kansas City. They can hang a number. And Mike McDaniel, having been under Kyle Shanahan last year in San Francisco, he knows how the offense works. He knows the weak spots for Jimmy Garoppolo. This is a lot of points to lay in a game that should be ultra competitive. I find myself siding with the Dolphins. Wow. I get you. I'm going to disagree with him there, too. I think it's going to be like... I think it's going to be every bit as tight as he says it is until late. And I think I got San Francisco winning this by a touchdown. Mm. Joe's going for it today. All right. Uh, your hometown, Philly, five-point home favorites hosting Tennessee. Your thoughts on this one? Yeah, another underdog here. Give me Tennessee plus the points. The number's coming down for a reason. There's a lot that Philadelphia does well. Two things in particular. Number one, they're the best run offense in the NFL. Number two, they are the best first half team in the NFL. They jump all over you. Tennessee is built to neutralize that. They are the number one run defense in the NFL, according to Football Outsiders, and they're the number two scoring defense in the first half. But what Tennessee does well is run the football with Derrick Henry, and that plays right into the Achilles heel of the Philadelphia Eagles, who have been struggling to defend the run all season long. People are going to check out on Tennessee because they saw them lose last week at home to Cincinnati. Everybody loves Philadelphia, but the last few weeks have been dicey for the Eagles. They didn't cover against the Packers. All right, they didn't cover against Indianapolis. They didn't cover the spread against Washington. In fact, they lost that outright. I think Tennessee keeps this really tight at the link on Sunday. I totally agree with him. I'm rolling with Tennessee, at least in a tight game. Here's the deal. I've been, I've been lamenting the Philadelphia Eagles and how they've looked over the last three weeks. He just said they didn't cover the spread. I had them drop all the way to number five them, unless I got guys like Charlie Mack, Will Smith, boy, and all of these folks calling me complaining. How the hell are you going to have a 10 and one team at number five? I said, have you watched them the last three weeks? I'm not satisfied with what I'm seeing, particularly overall defensively, but especially their run defense. And with Tennessee having just lost, I'm going to roll with Joe Fortball on this one. All right, fair enough. Let's talk a little hey, college Molly, football. Molly, yeah, go I ahead. hope those you're boots you're wearing are steel-toed because Stephen A's dropping names all over that set today. Oh, what else is new? Right. I need full steel armor then for that. Oh. Uh, the Pac-12 championship game is Utah against uh, USC. Excuse me, the Trojans, two-and-a-half-point favorites. What's the play here? Anything less than three, I'm playing USC. I know Sharp Money came in on Utah at plus three. I know Utah beat them earlier in the season. I know there's plenty of reasons to believe Utah is going to make this a game. I don't buy it. 
Utah at home versus Utah on the road are two very different teams. At home, 6-0 straight up. 5-1 against the spread, scoring 40-plus points per game. On the road, look at that. 3-3, three three, losses at Florida, at Oregon, at UCLA. They're scoring significantly less. And that 32 points per game on the road, that's inflated because they hung 60-plus on a lousy Colorado team last week. That number was sub-30 prior to last week. I think USC jumps all over them in this game. Caleb Williams goes on to win the Heisman Trophy and the Trojans find themselves in the playoff. We completely agree. So let me ask you this question to close this out. Should Deion Sanders take the Colorado job? I would love to see Deion Sanders coaching anywhere, especially at a Power 5 school. I would love that. I love what he's done. It's going to be tough to recruit at Colorado, but the Pac-12 is going to get it. It's going to shrink. You're going to lose USC. You're going to lose UCLA. There is opportunity there. Deion Sanders anywhere at a school like that, I would love to see what he could do. Well, we know he can certainly recruit and coach. Yeah, but if USC good. is gone, I don't know if I want to be in the Pac-12. That's my issue, but that's just me. <laughs> Fair enough. We'll solve those problems another day. Joe, we'll circle back with you next week. Have a fabulous weekend. Thank you so much Take for your easy, expertise. All right. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.